Procreate is updating that app and it's going to be the biggest update in the world that we've ever seen for Procreate and that is Procreate 5. So I thought for this video and before the release of Procreate 5 I would show you the brush engine and how you can create amazing looking brushes. Brushes that look absolutely ridiculously realistic and I created this very very easily within Procreate itself. So if you want to learn how to create some calligraphy brushes and brushes for your hand lettering to create really nice textures whether it's in black or white stick on to the end of this video and you'll find out this video is brought to you by fresh books so in your document go into your brush panel here and then we'll just go ahead and select a brand new brush now we will be taken to this place called the brush studio this is where we do all the changes with inside the brushes in procreate to make it that much nicer so the first thing i'm going to do when i'm in here is i'm going to not worry about the stroke or anything but the shape the shape is the biggest thing the shape is the shape of the brush and right now it's just a sort of circle so I'm going to go ahead and press edit and we're going to import from the source library. Now the shape that I'm going to use is one that's already pre-installed and it's the oval shape. And what you can do here is when you have it, you can twist it around. If you double tap it or two finger tap it, it'll change from black to white. Just make sure it's on that black setting and I'm going to bring it so it's vertical up because it works well for what I'm trying to do. Press done and that will be in here right now. The next thing I like to do is just mess around with this brush and see what's going Going on. I'm going to put azimuth on which means that it will instantly orientate itself to where my pen is like so and then I'm going to go ahead and change the count really quick to two you can just click on here and press two if you want to you don't have to use these little bits now you can just click on them and select the what you want azimuth is on and I'm not going to change anything down here I'm just going to put a uh, classic or no filtering on I think for now because that's the way that i want it now we've got the actual shape here so it, it looks like a brush pen it acts like it but we need to make it look better and more weathered and the way you do that is by the grain now right now the grain source is basically just white so what we need to do really is edit it and import from the source library another grain source so you've got all these different kinds of grain sources but i'm going to go for uh, one that is you know pretty weathered but looks nice so i want to go for like i don't know i'm going to go for dry paper and I'm going to go ahead and just make it so it's predominantly black. Again, you can use a two finger tap to create that different alpha channel. Now, if you brought in your own sketches or your own textures, then you can go into auto repeat. What auto repeat does is it allows you to see how seamless your textures are. And because my texture pr works pretty well, I'll just press done and then we've got that there. Now you can see the texture has changed slightly, but it isn't affecting it the way we want to. And that's because the blend modes are in the shape. And I'm just worried about this whole shape here. A little side tutorial, once you've filled this little sketch part up here, just to test your brush, go up to the drawing pad and clear it. You can actually preview it in different sizes and different colors. So you know exactly how it's going to work across the board. So you don't ever have to sort of worry. The next thing, that we need to do is go ahead and change the contrast of the brush i'm going to put a stroke down here as you can see the contrast changes to the brush stroke on the right so you can see there a little change and that's a really good thing that's happening in the new version of procreate but then not only that we've got a blend mode option so click on the blend mode and when we go down we can start to see that it changes as we go and i'm going to go for something like this i think that's color burn and the reason being is because I want a really weathered look like that. That looks really nicely weathered. I'm going to change the movement to probably, we could go 80% or 90% movement because I don't want it to be just static all the time. But I do want it to work really well. So I'm going to go 90 so it's not rolling the texture around. Uh, the scale, I'm going to go probably just down to 20. So I'm just going to... Do 20 there and 90 here so you can see what I mean. Looks very nice. I'm going to put another stroke here and then I'm going to check the filterings. So I might just do no filtering or just the classic one for now. Uh, but you can still see there's a few things in here that I need to change. And we can do that very easily uh, through the burnt edges. It gives you a different feel to the burnt edges. I'm going to go for a uniform or heavy glaze, I think. I don't really like the intense glaze. 
but it depends really on the brush that you're trying to create. Now make sure in your stroke panels that you've got your spacing set to something like four or five. Reason why you don't want to be seeing individual like brush dots all over your work. It makes it look not very good. So when we go back to grain or even rendering and we go for a uniform blend, it makes it look even more natural for that brush. In wet mix, I'm not going to change that because this is not a wet brush. This is supposed to be a very dry brush. Color dynamics, again, I'm not going to change this. This is for like a whole new video. But if you wanted to, you could change the color of your brush pen whilst you're drawing to do with pressure, the tilt, anything you want, you can change now, which I'll do a whole new video off later on. I'm not going to change anything in dynamics because this is a calligraphy brush. Now in pressure, I'm going to bring up my size to like 50 for now because we're not done but i want to see the size differences but i also probably want to see what it's like without the size compression in there as you can see it's starting to take place more as a calligraphy brush and you're not seeing me do any calligraphy yet but i can tell from many times doing this it's looking more and more like a calligraphy brush like a like a tombow that's running out which is what i'm going for now in grain i'm going to go back down to a 28 percent so i have like a bit of movement and it creates a little less of that texture but it gives you the streaks that you want you've also got your zoom but i don't want it to follow the size i want it to be at 80 and that's just from trial and error for me i don't want it to follow the size when it's like getting bigger or smaller. Now I'm gonna just start testing my untitled brush out to see what it's doing. And as you can see here, it's not really following my iPad screen. So we need to change some of the settings inside the brush first. We're gonna turn off orient to screen. So then it will actually work where I want it to. I don't want it to always orient. Now I always get it out into a new document and start testing it. I kind of like the look of that, it looks streaky. But what I think we could do is a few other things. Now, when you're doing calligraphy, you want to be able to have like very consistent ups and downs. Now what I've noticed in my brush here is when I'm pushing down and I like basically bring down, it goes like thin to thicker. Now we need to battle that somehow because otherwise Procreate and the work that you do isn't gonna look too great. You're gonna have like really strange formations like this. And the reason why people have this issue is because they haven't done a little hack that I always put into my brushes. And that's because I use the minimum and maximum size to ensure that I've got the exact spacing that I want within my brush or the exact amount of thin thickness. So when I go back into my Apple Pencil here, I'm gonna put my size to 100%, go back to properties, and I'm going to change the maximum and minimum size. We'll press done. And then when we're in here now, you can see it's not got any of that problem. That problem has been battled out. So it goes like thin and thick where I want it. Now, another place where people go and fall off a little bit is in the taper. Now, the taper is like kind of like the most annoying part of the process for me. But now they've got a new engine for it. So you could taper off your edges. I leave that off and my tip animation off just because it makes it a bit quicker when I'm doing my thing. Now, if you wanted more streaks and a more weathered effect, go into grain and you will get this by going to grain and contrast. Now you can see there when I up the contrast, it simply just ups the contrast of the grain, which is a great way of just quickly editing your effect very quickly. And you can make it look more or less grained if you wanted to with loads of streaks. Now with bleed, we could go all the way up if we wanted to, to create a really cool bleed, but I, I tend to not bother with it too much other than maybe one or 2% for my calligraphy brushes. Another place where a lot of people like struggle with is in like when they're creating their strokes is the response. So turn off response. This gives you a more natural feeling when creating calligraphy on your iPad. So now we have that brush and it's working pretty well inside of Procreate. That is the basis of creating one. Now, what if I don't want to create a brush pen, but wanted to create, let's say, a drawing pen? Well, all you need to do really is go ahead, duplicate that brush. And when you go there, change the shape. And I'm going to change mine to this. Now, this is like one that is inside of the source files in Procreate, but it is the gothic calligraphy brush with lots of streaks in it now what i'm going to do for this is when i go back and press done i'm going to turn off azimuth and make sure that it is correct in where it's supposed to be like so when you turn off azimuth it will keep 
that brush at the same angle. And we can go ahead and change the grain so we can reduce that contrast to wherever we need it. Now we have like this gothic brush that works really well and you can do a lot of things with it. In fact, I'll do the word go. It's my favorite word to do it in the practice of gothic calligraphy. And you can see there you've got all the really nice bitty texture in there. And last but not least, let's go ahead and create some words to make sure that this actually performs well as a calligraphy pen in Procreate. And there you have it, a really nice well-performing brush that you can go ahead and modify and sell. I use these steps in most of my brushes, but I thought it would be handy for you guys just to get a head start in Procreate 5 with the brand new brush engine when it came out. This video is brought to you by FreshBooks. FreshBooks is a cloud accounting service that I've been using as a graphic designer for a long time now. If you're anyone that does freelance work or you work in the hand lettering business where you have to send invoices, FreshBooks makes it easier for you to send invoices, gather up your expenses, and it even gets you paid faster. My favorite FreshBooks feature is probably being able to see when a client has viewed my invoice and for the ability for them to pay me very easily by just pressing the pay me now button. If you'd like to try 30 days of Fresh books completely free and it is completely risk-free then click that link down below i think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you do if you like this video please press that red subscribe button down below leaving a comment let me know what videos you want to see next if you didn't like the video press the dislike button twice and i'll catch you guys in the next video see you soon goodbye